What's up everyone, how are you today? It is Andrew here from Apple Insider and we are talking about thermal throttling today on Apple's brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. We've covered a lot about the MacBook Pro, the brand new one, but I think this is one question that a lot of people had. What are the thermal limitations of this machine? Is there any unnecessary, unwarranted thermal throttling that are gonna push that performance down below what it should be? and kind of what changes Apple made along the way. So in this video, we have the top of the line 16 inch MacBook Pro, outfitted with the 2.4 gigahertz, eight core i9 processor, and the 5500M graphics with eight gigs of VRAM. So we're gonna take that machine, we're gonna run it through some benchmarks, and we're gonna break this video up into two parts. The first part, we're gonna talk about the performance of this machine, just the general performance, and then saving for the end, we're going to heavily uh, investigate any thermal throttling that is going on here. So stay tuned through the whole thing. Let's get going, starting out with the performance of the top of the line 16 inch MacBook Pro. For the first benchmark to check out the performance of the top of the line Mac, we are gonna to turn to the Unigen Heaven benchmark, focusing here on graphics. Running the benchmark, our machine with those 5500M graphics was able to score an 88.1 average frame per second and a total score of 2218. We also saw a maximum frame per second of 172.3. That far outpaces the standard 5300M graphics that we already tested, which earned an 86.6 frame per second, 2182 score, and had a maximum frame per or had a maximum frames per second of 162.1. So we definitely saw some improvements there in the graphics between these two. But this isn't really using metal and not a great test, it's still using OpenCL. So let's turn to Geekbench 5 and boot that up and run the compute test with metal on the specific AMD Radeon Pro graphics. So using the compute Geekbench 5 test with metal, the AMD graphics earned a 24300, way up from the 21757 our base model got. And that's more than a thousand points higher than the previous, previous generation base score of 13919. Looking at the standard benchmark or the standard Geekbench test, we had an 1160 single core and a 7243 multi-core. And compared to the base unit, which only earned an 1128 and a 5642. So again, huge multi-core gains here uh, between the base unit and this one, which is exactly what we'd expect. Things look really good from a benchmarking point of view. We see huge gains over the base model, which is what we'd expect, but we're also seeing gains over the previous generation models too. So there's a lot of good improvements here, which could bode well for that thermal testing. But before we get into that thermal testing and see how these processors actually heat up, we have to thank our sponsors for this video, Zag. Zag has a lot of brands under its umbrella, but one of our favorites has always been Mophie. And since we're talking about MacBook Pros and USB-C, we figured we should talk about our favorite battery packs from Mophie, which is the PowerStation AC and the PowerStation USB-C 3XL. These are some of the coolest battery packs out there on the market. They're fairly large in capacity and a great fabric finish to the outsides. Looking at the USB-C 3XL model, it has a 45 watt USB-C output, great for powering any high power devices such as an iPad Pro or a MacBook Pro, really any of the MacBook line that powers over USB-C. And then you have the PowerStation AC, which is even crazier and has a 100 watt AC output. So you can plug in anything that doesn't work over USB-C here, whether it's another charger, whether it's a camera, anything that you need to power up that has a, needs just a power port to do it on the go, this is the battery pack to do it. And it still has a USB-C output. So you still have 30 watts coming out of here as well as an additional USB-A port. Both of these guys are amazing and we pretty much travel with one of these no matter where we go. We love these battery packs, we love Mophie, and we love Zag. And if you want to pick up anything from Zag or Mophie, use the link down below in the description and use our exclusive coupon for 20% off any single item on the store. So go grab that now before that coupon expires. Now let's get back into that thermal testing of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now before we get into actually testing thermal throttling, it's important to understand what thermal throttling actually is. Now thermal throttling is what happens to a processor when it outputs so much heat that it has to lower its frequency in order to not overheat or cause problems. So it's putting out a whole bunch of heat, it's really fast going at the turbo boost speeds, the chassis can't dissipate that much heat and it has to slow down. Eventually it reaches a point of equilibrium where it puts out a certain amount of heat that the machine is able to withstand and dissipate okay, 
and it's at that one frequency. So that is the frequency that we're looking at here and that equilibrium point, we want that to be at or above what Apple's advertising. So if this says it's a 2.4 gigahertz processor, we don't want it to be idling around two gigahertz because then you're effectively getting below the clock speed that Apple is advertising. It is thermal throttling itself below the advertised threshold and that's a problem. We don't want that, we don't wanna see that. That was the problem a few years ago. Apple did correct it with a software update, but we don't want to see that this time around. So we're gonna go into Cinemage R20. We're gonna run the test a whole bunch of times, back to back to back to back, keeping the stress on the processor, keeping the heat up as it has a huge load of uh, tasks going on. And we wanna see where the equilibrium point is, how the processor is heating up, what point the fans turn on, and if this thing is going to be thermal throttled below av Apple's advertised speeds. So let's go ahead, spin up R20, spin up the Intel Power Gadget, and let's test this thing out. So here we are in Cinebench R20. We're just spinning it up. It's just starting to run at the moment the fans are off. So we wanna first watch this temperature here and see when the fans start to kick in. And it looks like they're starting to turn on, at least in our previous testing, we've ran this test several times now. For us, they started to kick on around the 90 degree point. So it's a decent point here right now. It's still completely silent as this test is going through. As this temperature is starting to rise, we should see here the fans quietly starting to kick in around that 90 degree point, and they max out around 96, which is where that temperature, for us at least, has been staying. So that is a good thing to know. If you're using this under light loads, those fans should not kick in at least for a little bit. We do hear them starting to spin up just a tiny bit as it starts to cross that 90 degree threshold. But this is just our first test and the temperature here and the fans kicking on is just one aspect. We wanna see what this frequency goes to. You can see it jumps all the way up there to five gigahertz right off the bat. We wanna see where this thing maxes out at. So let's go ahead and run this test a whole bunch more times, keeping that heat up on this processor and seeing where we get. Okay, so we are probably seven or eight tasks deep in this testing here and we're really impressed so far. So the temperature looks like it maintains around 94 to 96 degrees as we continue to run these. So that looks like it's a happy temperature line there. Uh, it's thermal design point. And then we're looking at the frequency up here and we're actually like averaging right now at 3.26, but the actual line is more around uh, 319 is right around where we're averaging. It's got a little bit of a spike up and a little bit pool down, but we're averaging 310 to 320. Um, which is really good. That's a really high score for Apple calling this a 2.4 gigahertz processor. So from what we've seen in this testing, we can pretty conclusively say that there is no excessive thermal throttling on the new MacBook Pro. They are maintaining a great clock speed for the chipsets that are in here and a definite improvement over the previous generation. So we did it, we just finished our testing and we're surprised. We're really surprised. We know Apple talked about increasing the cooling system and the thermal issues with this machine in their press releases and everything, but to see it actually for ourselves, we were overjoyed. The last generation unit was topping out at about 2.8, 2.9 gigahertz, which was above the 2.4 clock speed that Apple promised. This is the same processor as that we're looking at now, and it was only getting up to 2.8, 2.9. So for this machine to get up to 3.19, basically 3.2 gigahertz just sustained at that 96 or so degrees without dropping below, that's fantastic. It is well above Apple's advertised clock speeds. So it doesn't seem Apple is having any more thermal issues with their machines for as small and compact as these are running at such great speeds. We're impressed. This is an overall win for pro users. They're getting a lot more performance out of this machine over the previous generation, which you saw earlier in our performance testing. If you were holding off on picking up a new 60 inch MacBook Pro, waiting to see if there was any thermal issues there, rest assured, they're not. Go ahead and pick one up. You can find the best deals at the links down below in the description. Save yourself some money. Let me know what you guys think about all this over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you want to help out our sponsors, Zag and Mofi, you can use the link down below in the description with our coupon code and save 20% off any single item. Make sure you guys do that before that coupon code expires. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.